Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials. And in today's tutorials, I'm going to do something I haven't done much of. This is pretty much totally unscripted and off the cuff, so to speak. And today I'm going to tell you, never stop learning. What I'd like to do in today's video is to just explain to everybody why you should always keep an open mind about learning. And I'm not just talking about learning new topics. I'm talking about learning more information about the things you already think you know. I'd like to give you some examples of what to do and what not to do. Here's an example of what not to do. I have a friend whose wife is pretty much very convinced and has told me many times nobody needs to eat a piece of meat larger than a deck of cards. Well, about the third time she told me this, I said, well, why? And her answer, well, you just don't. And she would scoff at anybody who had an answer different than that. It reminded me a lot, I'm sad to say this, of my mom, but she was one who, when she would make up her mind about something, it was get out of her way because her mind was made up, don't confuse her with the facts. I'm sad to say there are far too many people like this. If you're that kind of person, then in my humble opinion, you need to change. My mind is made up, don't confuse me with the facts, well, no. When you're going to make up your mind about something, the first thing I think you need to do is to decide how confident are you in this conclusion. In other words, do you have total 100% confidence about what you have decided, or is there room for doubt? Okay, here's an example of that. I am totally 100% convinced that the law of gravity is accurate. There is not a single person in this world who will run off the edge of a cliff and then have two or three seconds of, oops, I need to scramble and get back, like Wile E. Coyote in a Roadrunner cartoon. That's just not going to happen. If you run off the edge of a cliff, you're going to fall. I am 100% convinced of that. That's the law of gravity, and I have a very high level of confidence in that law. Okay. Let's talk about things that we're not confident of. And about this, I need to tell you, it's totally okay to say, I don't know. It's totally to okay to say, well, I believe this to be true, but I'm not 100% certain. One of the best examples of this is the ongoing debate between creationists and evolutionists. Now, you know, there are people who very strongly hold to both sides of that issue, some on one side, some on the other, and they will yell and discuss and scream and sometimes almost come to the point of blows about what they believe, and they are sure they're right and the other person is wrong. Well, I've got to tell you, I am very firmly opinionated on the issue as well, and my opinion is I have no clue. You know why? I wasn't there, and you weren't either, and neither was anybody you know. So all we can do is make a decision, take a position based on what we know, what we feel, but unless we have incontrovertible proof, then we do not have 100% confidence. So just to tell you, whenever you take a position on any particular item, you should always decide how confident are you in this. Now, you probably don't want to decide that you're 100% confident just because you want to be 100% confident. You need to be 100% confident based on proof, okay? Now, what are we talking about proof? I'm the kind of person who will make up my mind based on the evidence I know. I will take my actions and form my opinions based on the best information I have at that particular time but I am always open-minded about learning new information. And you should be too. Always keep an open mind if somebody contradicts you. Why? Okay, here's a very important point. 
if you will keep an open mind about the things you learn, especially when somebody contradicts you and has a different opinion, you're going to learn something new. Now, you got to understand this. Telling me the same thing 27 times is not going to convince me. Telling me the same thing loudly is not going to convince me. If you want to convince me, then you need to give me proof. Now, what am I talking about proof? There are certain levels of proof, and some are more credible than others. To me, the gold standard of proof is a double-blind, placebo-controlled, peer-reviewed scientific study, something that can be replicated by anybody who tries it. And I'm talking about studies that are unbiased, non-influenced, not financed by some organization that has an agenda. Unfortunately, there are hundreds of these studies that have been conducted that have been financed by big pharma or big agriculture or any company that stands to make a lot of money off of the results of this study. And needless to say, those studies have results that are not quite as credible as other studies that are not influenced by somebody with the budget. Let me give you an example of this. Dr. Dale Bredesen of the University of California in Los Angeles I believe he's their head of their neuroscience department. He wrote a book called The End of Alzheimer's about his recode protocol. He has successfully reversed Alzheimer's in a number of the patients in his clinic. And if you think about it for a second, most doctors who practice traditional medicine will tell you there is no cure for Alzheimer's. There is no reversal of Alzheimer's. Well, Dale Bredesen has done it. And if you want to read his book, I will put a link to the book in the description down below. Now, Dale Bredesen in his book was talking about trying to get funding for his studies so he could do more and better research on his RECODE protocol. RECODE means reduction of cognitive decline. Well, he went to pretty much every place he could find that funds these sorts of studies and it turns out they all had an agenda. They want to be able to have one pill, one medicine to treat one symptom and presto, cure Alzheimer's and therefore make a lot of money off of it. That's their agenda, to make money. They're profit driven. Dr. Bredesen's analysis pretty much concludes that Alzheimer's disease is not a single symptom disease. It's like having 36 basketball size holes in the roof of your house. And if you just treat one of those symptoms, you're only gonna patch one of those holes. You're still gonna have a leaky roof. You're still gonna have Alzheimer's disease. So when he went to all of these funding sources, trying to get funding for his research, their answer was, oh no, we don't treat multiple symptoms at a time. We only want you to treat one symptom. And of course, his answer was, but it's not a one symptom disease. In other words, they had studies, scientific studies that they had funded that proved that what they had to sell was superior and you should buy it and make them a lot of money. These scientific studies in my book are just not good proof, not that credible. You can use them as a good input, but by the same token, you do not want to use them as your only input. So my point here is it's okay to make up your mind about something, to hold an opinion about something, but you do not want to make it firm to the point that you scoff at new information when it comes in. Always be open to new information. The point I'm saying is always keep learning. Always keep an open mind. It's okay to form opinions. It's okay to take a position on issues, anything from politics, to medicine, to, to religion, to any of these polarizing issues that people have various opinions on, always keep learning. If you encounter people who don't want to listen to contrary opinions, they generally will scoff at anything that doesn't agree with them, then those kind of people you probably don't want to 
spend a lot of time discussing with. For example, when my friend's wife, when I ask her, why shouldn't anybody eat a piece of meat larger than a deck of cards? And she said, well, they just shouldn't. At that point, I decided this just isn't worth discussing with her. So we just haven't discussed it since then and we've gotten along fine, but she's shown me what kind of person she is. She just doesn't want to learn something new. How about you? Do you want to learn something new? Do you want to scoff at things that don't agree with your preconceived opinions? Do you want to be the kind of person that always learns something new? I don't know about you, but I'm always going to be open-minded to things that disagree with me. And I want to know why you disagree. And if you have a better reason for your point than I do for my point, then it's a good chance I'm going to change my mind and adopt your opinion as mine. If you like this video, go ahead right now, give us a big old thumbs up, let those YouTube robots know that you thought it was a good video and let me know too. Also, be sure and leave me a comment down in the section below. Let me know what you think about always be open to learning more. Give us a subscribe and then click the bell icon and be notified whenever we post another great tutorial right here on David's Tutorials. Take care everybody and stay safe.